What's up, Passionate DJs? David here, and I'm excited because Den and DJ has once again made some big announcements. Coming in March or April, they're going to be releasing new players and a new mixer, the SC6000 and 6000M Prime and the X1850 Prime Mixer. Now, this new gear comes with some cool new features, and we're going to take a quick look at all these things, do a quick summary, and then compare it to all that Pioneer, Nexus, industry standard stuff and see how it holds up today. Will Denon succeed in rattling Pioneer's cage? Are they making an offer that you as a DJ can't refuse? Well, watch on and decide for yourself. Alright, here we go again, folks. Den and DJ coming at us again with some great additions to their Prime series, which has already been making waves in the industry for the past few years. Now let me just start by saying how exciting it is to see Denon going so hard with this. They're providing more value than their competitors, they're giving pause to controller DJs who previously couldn't see the appeal to standalone hardware, and they're proving that they listen to their customers by continually adding features even two plus years after launch. Now if you'd like to see a more comprehensive breakdown of the new gear, I've released a video over on the DJ hookup, which I'll link in the description below. Be sure to subscribe over there right after you're done subscribing over here. Now that video will be more of a deep dive, but in this one I'll give a quick overview of the new units, point out the new stuff it's bringing to the table, and then compare it to its biggest competition. I'm of course talking about the ever-established Pioneer CDJ2000 and DJM900 Nexus 2 setup, the so-called industry standard that Denon has been chipping away at with the Prime lineup. The SC6000 is Den and DJ's new flagship multiplayer, and you'll immediately notice two major changes. The upsized 10.1 inch high res touchscreen, and the jog wheel which is also about a half inch bigger than the previous one. There are a few minor cosmetic changes, but for the most part, you'll pretty much be familiar with what's going on here as far as layout. Now one of the other major changes is less obvious, but it is a pretty big deal. Now like the Prime 4, the SC6000 now has space for an internal hard drive. That's right, each player has a SATA drive bay. Pop a drive in there and you can load it up with music to your heart's content. And of course, share it across the network to your other players. The players also have built-in Wi-Fi and wired LAN connectivity for music streaming. Now this effectively means that you can DJ from anywhere with a solid internet connection and not even have to carry a music collection around with you. And by the way, the decks will save the track locally first, so it'll never just stop playing in the middle of a track. So no worries there. Now this is a feature that was also added to the SC5000 and the Prime 4 in their version 1.4 firmware update. It's pretty encouraging to see Denon adding such major features two years after launch and right before announcing new products. Now Tidal is supported at launch, with Beatport, BeatSource, and SoundCloud support coming soon thereafter. And later in the year you'll also be able to use it as an official Serato DJ controller. Now the SC6000M is the version that has motorized platters with a real vinyl disc and slip mat. It has adjustable torque and gives scratch DJs that tactile feel, which they may otherwise miss from turntables. They did add a quick release function to the vinyl over the 5000M, and overall it's just a little sexier looking in my opinion. Now the new X1850 mixer, as indicated by the name, is more of a minor revision. It's quite similar to the 1800, but it makes some tweaks to the filters, improves visibility, adds a MIDI clock start function to help you sync up with external instruments or drum machines, and my favorite new addition, which is the effects quantize. Now, if you watched episode 186 of the podcast titled Prime Time, you might recall me fumbling over the beat effects a little bit and wondering why it wouldn't snap to the beat if everything was all networked together. Well, Denon has fixed that with this new feature, and I certainly welcome it. Now, all this new hardware still has all the best features from the earlier Prime setup, dual layer functionality, which is basically like having two decks in one, boatloads of connectivity options, a built-in ethernet hub on the mixer to keep things nice and tidy while sharing across the network, and a beautiful and intuitive user interface, which makes the whole thing really just a pleasure to use. 
The new hardware will be available in the second quarter of this year. The SC6000 will cost $1499 US dollars, or if you want the M version, it will be $1699. The X1850 mixer will cost $10.99, and by the way, the SC5000 will still be available at about $10.99, and there are no current plans to discontinue it. And officially, the X1800 will still be available as well, though if I personally had to guess, I'd say it'll eventually get replaced by the 1850, just due to the fact that there are very minor differences between the two. All right, so let's go ahead and compare this new gear to the big Pioneer Nexus setup. First we'll address sound quality, and as I look at the numbers here, it's pretty much a wash. The frequency range, there's a benefit to the Pioneer setup, but with the signal to noise ratio and the total harmonic distortion, uh, the Prime players seem to do a little better, but the Pioneer mixers seem to do a little better. And uh, overall, they're pretty much not going to be detectable to the ears of most people, so we might be splitting hairs here. Um, but like I said, the mixer probably gets edged out by Pioneer a little bit. Players go to the primes. Uh, everything else is pretty much the same. They're both 24-bit, 96 kilohertz output. They both have a similar level of output. So we'll just kind of call this a tie. Taking a look at the SC6000 players, having a look at media sources. Uh, the Denons support SD card, USB, and of course that SATA hard drive that you can put on the inside, plus streaming services, whereas the CDJ supports USB, SD card, and then of course still has an optical drive for those of you still using CDs out there. When it comes to file systems and formats, um, in addition to everything that the Pioneer supports, as far as fo file format, you can also expect support for MP4 and AUG Vorbis files. And a few more file systems are supported as well. So if you formatted your drives as XFAT or NTFS, you'll probably have better luck with the Prime system. Now as far as compatible libraries, the Prime, of course, supports its own engine Prime setup, but will also import record box libraries directly on the unit itself and it will maintain your cues and loops. And using the Engine Prime software, they do provide some functionality which will let you import Serato and tractor collections and things like that. And then you could of course re-export that to another drive and use it, which really gives an edge to the Prime here. Now let's talk displays. The Denon players have that nice new big 10.1 inch multi-touch gesture capable beautiful HD screen whereas the CDJ still has that old 7 inch resistive single touch kind of display. It's just not going to be as responsive and of course it's not going to be as big and high res as the new Denon unit is and uh, you know the Denon will give you that more iPhone style of experience that you're used to. The refresh rate is also better on the Prime, coming in at 50 frames per second as opposed to 20 frames per second on the CDJ, which means it'll just have a little bit better scrolling waveforms and things like that. Not a big deal, but just worth noting. And of course in the jog wheels, the Prime has that beautiful full color LED backlit round display with album art, whereas on the CDJ it's more of a simple color display, just kind of a HUD giving you basic track information. Now as far as the controls, I'm also giving the edge to the Prime players. The jog wheels on the SC6000s are 8.5 inches or 216 millimeters and they're capacitive which means that they're touch sensitive whereas on the CDJ they're pressure based. That's really more a matter of preference and they are both tension adjustable though the Prime does have a very nice LED light ring around the outside which is RGB and customizable whereas on the CDJ it's only a red or or white LED. Overall, the Prime also has an advantage for the buttons, mostly because they're nice and rubberized, whereas the CDJs still have a plasticky, clicky thing going on. And the pads on the SC6000, well, there are eight of them where there's only four on the CDJ, and you have to use banking to sort of access a, a second set of the four pads. Uh, and on the Prime, you actually get hot cues, loops, roll, and slicer, whereas on the CDJ, you're only dealing with hot cues. Both units support beat jumping. On the SC6000, you do it via buttons, whereas on the CDJ2000 Nexus 2, you do it via screen. As far as start and stop time adjustment, uh, on the Prime, you can adjust the stop time, but not the start, whereas you can do both on the CDJs. 
Auto looping is a much better situation on the prime unit as well. Using the loop knob, you can actually select up to 64 beats worth of looping, whereas on the CDJ, you're limited to either four or eight beats, and then you can use a loop cutter to cut it down. As far as pitch adjustment, both of the units have 100 millimeter throw pitch faders with center LED to indicate the center or the 0% mark. Uh, however, the Prime unit does have pitch bend buttons, which is something that the CDJ just straight up doesn't have. So overall for controls, again, I'm giving the edge to the Prime SC6000s on this one. Now, talking about the onboard features, you're only gonna get that dual layer functionality with the Denons, bar none. Uh, same thing with track analysis and library management. You can do that stuff right on the unit with Denon, which is something you can't do on CDJs. You can actually just bring in raw MP3 files and the unit will actually analyze the track, generate your waveforms, and do all that kind of stuff. Uh, set your, you'll be able to use your quantize and sync and all that stuff without having to have prepped it first and then exported it to a drive. The Prime also supports internet access, streaming, key syncing, uh, just things that you're not going to find on the CDJ. Uh, both of them do support user profiles, zooming of waveforms, a needle drop function, and they both have a master limiter. Uh, the loop adjustment is a little bit different. On the Prime, you get a seamless loop adjust, whereas on the CDJs, you have to adjust in half loop increments. Uh, storage inputs. The SC6000 has three USB inputs one SD card input and one SATA drive bay, whereas the CDJ has one USB input, one SD card, and one optical drive or CD drive. Um, I'm going to give this as a win to the Prime, but it is worth noting that if you are still a working DJ who uses CDs, maybe you've been a mobile DJ for many years and that's how you've maintained your collection, uh, the Pioneer is just about the only option left for this. Uh, you're not going to have this in the Denon universe seemingly anytime soon. Of course, both of these units support linking across multiple players. Another cool thing about the Prime setup is that you can use one of those USB ports on the back of the SC6000s and uh, connect a USB keyboard if you really want to, to do track searching and things like that. And then speaking about software compatibility, I'm gonna give a slight edge to Pioneer on this one for now. The management software that's used by Denon is of course Engine Prime, whereas on the CDJs you'll be using Rekordbox. And it's true that the Prime will import more types of libraries, or it'll at least try to uh, interpret them. But overall, it's just not as robust software as Rekordbox. It's not as established as Rekordbox. And so really that's just better software still, though they do keep releasing updates and uh, listening to user feedback on that one. Uh, both of them support sound switch and Resolume if that's something that you do to connect to control visuals and things like that. Uh, both of them support timecode. But for now, Serato HID support is on the CDJ only, though it will be coming to the SC6000s. And uh, as far as I know, Tractor DJ HID control is going to be CDJ only. That's not something that is on the docket for the Prime players, which is a little disappointing for me as a Tractor user. Uh, I would love to be able to plug in my laptop and just play a uh, Tractor whenever I wanted to. Unfortunately, that's just uh, not gonna be the case. So as you can see, feature for feature, the SC6000 just blows the current Pioneer offering out of the water. Though maybe that's a little unfair to Pioneer. The Nexus 2 came out like four years ago, and if we go back to the original Nexus version, we're reaching all the way back to 2012. That's the year Gangnam Style came out. So of course, yeah, the Denons would be a little more modernized, but to be fair, it's still probably the device you're most likely to compare the new Denons to when you're shopping. The SC6000s are a little bigger, especially in reference to their depth, which could be a problem if you're limited on surface space. And they're also a little taller, but the weights are pretty similar at under 13 pounds for each one. And to be clear, the dimensions are pretty much identical to the old SC5000s. Now, if you opt for the SC6000Ms, everything above still applies, but add motorized platters about five pounds and 200 bucks. They did add a quick release feature for easily removing that vinyl platter, and of course they're a little bigger now. Okay, so hopping back to that X1850 mixer and comparing it to the Nexus 2, of course both are four channel digital mixers with high quality sound, 40 millimeter channel faders and timecode support. 
and comparing the mixers is notably less of a slam dunk for Denon, though they're fairly comparable. You do still miss out on a few things that the Pioneer has, for example, an auxiliary return input, or the fact that the individual channel faders are user replaceable on the Pioneer. The Denon has a touch strip to select beat division for your effects, as compared to the little X pad on the Pioneer, which I would prefer. I just feel a little more confident pushing it. I also gotta say that I prefer the effects on the Pioneer overall, which is kinda saying something, because I'm really not a fan of Pioneer effects generally. I don't know, I may be in the minority on this one, but the DJM mixer's effects, as harsh as they are, seem to have a sense of clarity or accuracy or something to me over the Denon mixers traditionally. However, you can throw all that away when talking about filters, as I greatly prefer the Denon in this case, especially considering the fact that you can adjust the filter resonance to make it less squelchy. You know, that noise. Whereas you're stuck with pretty harsh filter model on the DJM. Now both mixers have adjustable contour settings for both the channel faders and the cross fader. However, the X1850 takes the cake because it has an actual dedicated knob to dial in your setting. The 900 Nexus 2, surprisingly, only lets you set a three position switch for this. Now I mentioned before that the channel faders on the Denon mixer aren't user replaceable, but that's not the case for the cross fader. Using their flex fader system, not only can you easily swap it out if necessary, but you can actually dial in your preferred tension by just twisting a little tiny screw. Definitely not something you can do on the Pioneer and a very nice touch. The 1850 gives better visual feedback too, has crispy little OLED screens, plus the Q buttons change color to match whichever Denon deck is playing beside it. It's not a game changer, but it is convenient nonetheless. Now probably the biggest feature that the Denon mixer has over the Pioneer is the built-in ethernet hub. Now this lets you share music from multiple players across the network, connect to stage link setups for event lighting and video control, or to connect to the internet for music streaming. And having the hub built into the mixer is super convenient and really just helps keep things tidy where you'd otherwise have to involve yet another piece of hardware to do this. So as you can see, you know, feature for feature, the new Denon stuff is just amazing. I mean, for the price, it blows the Pioneer stuff out of the water. Uh, of course, we are comparing brand new stuff to uh, Pioneer stuff, which is several years old now. Uh, but it's interesting to see just the, uh, the bar that Denon is raising and causing other manufacturers to have to step to uh, to really be able to deliver the same value for the price. As per usual, for a lot of people, the deciding factor between Denon and Pioneer is going to be, you know, do I need to fulfill riders, which are going to require Pioneer gear, or am I just really into that Pioneer ecosystem and I'm too afraid to step out of it? Uh, you know, that stuff is all over the world, Pioneer gear, and it's, uh, it's a hard proposition to tell somebody to hashtag change your rider uh, but Denon is making that choice easier and easier by just providing so many features and so much great stuff at this price point so if you still want to know a little bit more about the Denon setup uh, go on over to the DJ hookup where I put a little bit more extensive uh, deep dive into this new Denon stuff I'll put a link in the description below and uh, until then keep on spinning <laughs> <laughs>